introduce myself again. My name is Amy Nye, and I am the Partnerships and Training Manager here at Sunlight Foundation. And I am also joined here today by Eric Mill, our developer who built Scout, as well as Gabriella Schneider, our Communications Director, in addition to a couple of staff on hand here at Sunlight Foundation. So just as a quick background, Sunlight Foundation, we are a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization that works on government transparency through the use of technology and innovation. So as part of that mission, we build tools to help unlock government data um, to make it more meaningful and useful to the general public. And that's really why we built Scout, which is a legislative and governmental search and alert tool that lets you stay on top of bills in the federal government and across all 50 states as well as federal regulations and anything that is said in the congressional record. Before we get started, I actually wanted to show you a quick video about Scout. Scout is a free service from the Sunlight Foundation that alerts you when Congress or your state capital talks about or takes action on issues you care about. Search any word and Scout fetches every instance it's mentioned in a bill, regulation, or by any lawmaker on the floor of Congress. Set up an alert and Scout keeps track of your search and lets you know when new results roll in. Share your findings with others by tagging your searches. Scout brings to your email inbox the information you need to follow what happens with legislation you care about from many sources. And you can spend your time doing other things. you will find Scout at scout.sunlightfoundation.com. And to get started, it's super simple. You just start typing in the keyword or phrase that you're interested in searching. So I'm going to start with FOIA, which is also known as the Freedom of Information Act. So once you search for it, you will see that uh, Scout searches for everything. And you can look through the different data sets we have available for FOIA in bills in Congress and speeches in Congress, state bills, and additionally uh, federal regulations. So you, if you're an organization like ours that care about FOIA and everything, you can just hit create alert. And when you do that, it will prompt you to log in or sign up. So I'll just log in here. And there you go. So it just created an alert for you. And if you've made a mistake and you don't want this alert, you can just click Remove Alert. Um, and also, I just want you to know that uh, you can read more about our data sets on the About page, which is found on the bottom of your screen. And here you can read about the different data sets that we have and also uh, where it comes from and the frequency in which each data set is updated. So I'm going to go back to FOIA and look for FOIA in bills in Congress. So you can see here, you can also sort on the left-hand side by the stage of the bill. So if you're only interested in a bill that became law or only passed the House or the Senate, you can do so and it will sort for you. But let's say I'm just interested in FOIA and all bills in Congress, and actually in this particular bill, the FCC bill right here. And once you're here, you can see the title of the bill. I'm actually already following this bill. You can hit unfollow, follow. Um, and right below the title of the bill is the most recent action that was taken on the bill. Additionally, there are the resources and links to the original text. And you can read more about the sources on the right-hand side here. And if you click on the original text, it will actually bring you to the GPO text. And then here is the text of the bill. If you want more, it will show you more. And then below is the activity in which it, you're actually interested in. This is the official activity of the bill, as well as um, when it's scheduled for the floor. And you can click here to see the original source for that as well.
In addition to federal bills, you can actually also search for FOIA in all speeches in Congress from the congressional record. And I also want to note here that this um, speeches in Congress is powered by another tool we have called Capital Words. You can find that at capitalwords.org. And here at Capital Words, you can do more advanced searches and comparisons, um, and they'll have nice graphs and whatnot for you to look further into the information about um, speeches in Congress. But in Scout, you can create an alert for them. And on the left-hand side here, you can filter and sort by state. So for instance, if I am a reporter from Vermont and I'm only interested in what was said by um, legislators in my state, I can go to Vermont and it will sort by only Vermont. You can also do it by party and also in the chambers. Um, and then you can click on a speech that you're interested in and see the full text of the speech. And as with all our data sets, you can click onto the original text and be brought to the official um, source. And let's stay on the federal level here. Um, in addition to speeches in Congress, you can actually also look up uh, FOIA in federal regulations. And on the left-hand side, there is a filter that allows you to determine if you're only interested in a specific agency. So for instance, uh, let's say I'm only interested in FOIA as related to the EPA. And for a higher level of specificity, if I'm only interested in proposed regulations, it will sort by that as well. And if you want to just create an alert for FOIA in federal regulations um, by the EPA and proposed rules, you can just click alert. So in addition to federal data sets, uh, we also have state legislation across all 50 states. And this is something we're really excited about because um, this is a, a new offering that we have and also it doesn't really exist at all out there and definitely not for free. Um, so it is powered, our state bills is powered by another project of ours at Sun Life Foundation called Open States. And you can read more about the Open States project at openstates.org. And on a statewide level, um, Sometimes FOIA also is known as uh, Sunshine Law. So I'm going to go here and look up Sunshine Law in state bills. And you will see all the different bills that mention Sunshine Law legislation across the 50 states. And let's say I'm a lobbyist in Idaho and I'm only interested in sunshine legislation in Idaho, I can filter by that state. And this is the bill I'm interested in, for instance. So now you see the bill. You have the bill number. Um, the resources in the original text, you can click here and you will be brought to the um, page by the State House in Idaho on the specific bill. And then here is a quick summary, and I just want folks to know that depending on what state you're from and the data, you know, sometimes it's a one sentence, which is like Idaho, and other states like Pennsylvania, for instance, will have a very long and detailed summary about the legislation. And on the bottom here is the official activity and the votes. So when you create um, an alert or you follow a specific legislation, this is the information that will be sent to you. Um, but let's say, for instance, you know, I care about sunshine laws, but I really only care about um, sunshine legislation um, in regards to open records. So if I put in Sunshine Law Open Records, 
it's actually not going to come up with anything because it's searching, Scout is searching for the phrase. And Sunshine Law Open Records is not commonly used um, in the bill text. But what you can do is if you hit Advanced, it will allow you to now use quotes. So now you can put Sunshine Law and quotes over Open Records and now hit Search. And now I'm still in Idaho and that's why nothing showed up. But let's see Open um, Sunshine Law and Open Records in all states. And there you'll see all the different bills that mention Sunshine Law and Open Records. And you can find the one you're interested in and hit follow. So now that we have created a, a number of um, alerts, we can now look at the settings of your account to allow you to actually manage your account. So you go up here to settings, and there are some very generic user settings that you can do, like changing the password. Additionally, if you wanted to um, add a username or add a display name. And the display name is only really used for public feeds, in which I will talk about in a second. And below that, you can also look at and um, adjust your email notifications. So you can uh, change these settings account-wide. If you only want to get an aggregated alert, you can do once a day. If you want it immediately, you can choose so. And then you can also, in the subs uh, subscription page, check out um, and control that per alert. And we always recommend that you get updates about Scout and also about Sunlight Foundation. And it will tell you that your settings have been updated. In addition to email notification, because we know we really want to make this tool um, useful for folks that are in this space, whether you're a lobbyist or a journalist or an activist, or a nonprofit, if you're following a bill that's really important to you, you can also add in your phone number. And you will get a text notification to your phone. So if you add in your number here, you can click Add Number, and it will shoot a text to confirm and verify your phone number. Um, lastly, on the right-hand side here, there is a data, data mode. Um, so Eric, our developer, made Scout to be incredibly user-friendly for developers as well. So if you have any idea what this blurb is saying, you should definitely get a Sunlight key and sign up um, for data mode uh, so you can access some of the um, functionalities as a developer. So in addition to settings, um, now you can actually manage each of the alerts that you signed up for here. So now when you open this page, you will see a number of different alerts that we just made uh, regarding FOIA. And you can see that we created one uh, for FOIA on federal regulations um, by the EPA proposed rule. And let's say you don't care about this anymore, you can actually just hit remove to take this out of your alerts. Um, in addition, if you are interested in just getting an RSS for that specific um, search you created, you can click on the RSS button here, and it will bring you to the link for the RSS. Another functionality that Scout has is, uh, is that it allows you to tag. Um, and tagging is a really great resource because it helps you to manage all the alerts that you have on the back end. Because, you know, if you could be interested, like I am, you know, on FEC, but also regarding um, Disclose or other topics, then you can just put in the tags here. So this would be um, FOIA and um, regulations. You can put in multiple tags at once. Um, and then the tags will populate here on the right-hand side. And let's say, for instance, I wanted to look at the uh, FOIA tag. 
you will see the uh, searches that you've had that you've tagged as uh, FOIA. And you can make this collection um, public. What that means is that you will be able to share this um, with other people in your organization or on your website. And once you make this um, public, the search public, you can edit and create a description, the best for your feed ever. Um, and then hit update. Additionally, uh, this was the username which you found here in the settings. And you can share this now if I just copy this link and email this to another colleague, they can actually now look to see the alert system you've created in Scout for FOIA. You can also get the RSS feed as well. And Scout is a really great tool because not only does it allow you to create an alert on legislation and on the data sets that we have available, but it also actually allows you to use it as an alert system for anything else that has an RSS feed or has any um, data information. So if you go back to your uh, subscriptions page, you can go here to import an RSS feed. Um, so let's say I am interested in a specific journalist or um, I personally am a huge fan of David Polk from the New York Times and he writes this column on technology. You can copy the link, put it into Scout, hit preview, and Scout will actually go and look to see if there is uh, data from that page. And then you can make sure that this looks correct. Are these the articles in which you're interested in? And it's like, great. Um, you can also change the title and add a description. And you can just hit Create Alert. And once you do that, it will bring you back to your subscriptions page. And on the very bottom, you will now see I'm following a lot of things here. You will now see feeds. So these are the feeds that are coming in from outside of Scout. And you can also tag these feeds. So I already tagged um, this as technology. Uh, and this is also a really great resource because it allows you, if you're an organization for instance, and I have Sunlight Foundation here, and I want to uh, combine the information that we have at Sunlight Foundation with some of the bills in which we're tracking, I can tag, let's say this is a bill um, in which we're tracking in Idaho, I'll tag it with Sunlight. And then when I go up here to Sunlight, it now will aggregate all of that information uh, from within Scout and also from outside of Scout. So it really just creates a one-stop shop for you know, anything you're interested in um, and allows you to tag them and categorize them. So Scout is a very powerful uh, tool and it is made incredibly user friendly uh, for developers. Um, so what we actually did on our end is um, for reporters who are interested in following the elections beat for instance, uh, we have a site. It's called uh, followtheunlimitedmoney.com and it will bring you to a reporting site. And here we have integrated an FEC alert. Uh, and this is powered by Scout. So for instance, I am interested um, in following 
the FEC filings from Mitt Romney. I can type in Romney and then add the committees I'm interested in. Um, and I know reporters are always, the ones that are following this stuff, are always uh, refreshing the FEC site. So instead of doing that now, you can actually just click on the filings in which you're interested in, hit Get Alert, and it will tell you that you are being sent to the Scout page. And uh, as was before, you want to just make sure this looks correct. You can retitle this. You can also add a description. Many. And you can hit Create Alert. And now this will add that alert to your feeds. And you can tag this. So that's pretty much uh, some of the core functionalities uh, of Scout. And we are really excited because you know, we launched Scout just two weeks ago, and we are already developing new features. Um, and so Eric is working on uh, coming soon to Scout, including uh, scheduled hearings in the House and the Senate, in addition to real-time vote notification, as well as having hearings and events on state legislation, uh, which will be really important for folks who are covering uh, on the state level, and as well as a whole new um, section based on documents, so CRS reports, CBO, GAO, and other reports are all coming uh, to Scout. Uh, we'll just add one thing, uh, this is Eric speaking, that if you, anybody is free to email uh, scout at sunlightfoundation.com, and um, we're happy to field uh, more questions there anytime. Uh, yeah, there's a link at the top of Scout that's just a contact link which uh, will start an email to that address. Uh, so there's a question uh, about what an RSS feed is. Sure. Um, well, the short answer is that nobody has to know what RSS is in order to get email alerts from Scout. Uh, it is an optional feature to use. Um, RSS is it stands for really simple syndication, and it is basically just a way of organizing content as like a title a and a description and a date. So lots of blogs and news newspapers will publish RSS feeds that you can then put into other types of software that know how to read those, like Google Reader is a very popular one. And it's basically, it will, by getting all of these feeds, it allows you to sift and sort information in a way that's more efficient than bookmarking a hundred different newspapers and showing up every day to see if there's anything new. Uh, so we offer RSS feeds on Scout as uh, extra benefit for those who know how to use them, uh, but it, again, it is an optional feature. Um, and I see another question um, on whether if, we, if you know of a bill that is filed in one chamber of a legislature, local or state, does Scout allow any way to see companion bills in the other chamber? That is actually a fascinating question. Uh, and something that, so the short answer is no, it doesn't. Um, but we are actually, we have a number of projects that we're working on at Sunlight uh, around automatically detecting bills that are similar to each other, which would it, typically include companion bills in another chamber. Uh, this is something that uh, will find its way into Scout at some point and will find its way into our Open States project in general at some point, uh, some point soon, I hope, uh, but n not right now, but that is something that we care about a lot. Um, and there's another question about uh, how soon can we get information such as member speech on the floor? And that information is actually in our About uh, Us page. Um, for the congressional record? It's, so it's typically, uh, with the congressional record, it's, it's typically uh, about a day of delay. The Congress publishes the congressional record every morning, uh, once a day. So as soon as that gets published, we process it, we, it becomes searchable in our systems, and if you have an alert subscribed for around speeches, then you'll typically get it uh, in the morning. Um. Looks like there's a question by Amanda. Where are you getting your CRS reports um, for the additional feature and wondering how you might get around any restrictions? 
So it's probably going to be from a mix of sources. Primarily, it will be, and again, this is an upcoming feature, uh, not one that's in Scout right now, just to clear that up. Uh, CRS reports are not public by default, but a number of them get released through different places. Uh, a major one uh, that is intermittently updated is OpenCRS. I believe it's OpenCRS.com. Uh, and that will be a, a chief source. We're not going to be able to offer 100% coverage over CRS reports until there is actual change in Congress. But we, we, we are working to get as much access to CRS reports as we can, and we'll be very public about how we get those CRS reports when we have, that, uh, when we have them going through. Um, and there's a question from Paul, uh, wants to know how close to real time is state legislative data posted? Uh, I will be giving you an unsatisfying answer to that question, which is that it completely varies depending on the state, and there's really um, no, no, no one specific answer I can give. Uh, typically, we get uh, data, when states publish the information, it should appear in Scout very quickly. Certainly less than a day, often, very, often quicker than that. Uh, states are a little, often a little different than Congress, as you probably know, since you're asking this question, uh, in that they're not really in session all through the year, many of them anyway, and they go through uh, very small sessions where they do a lot of legislative activity. A lot of state legislators are part-time for that reason. It is also the case that in some states they pre-file all of their legislation at the beginning of the session and then no more legislation is introduced throughout the rest of the session. So the, the, the chaos in the state level is much higher, but what we can get, we do get as soon as possible. Um, and there's another question from uh, Tom. Can you search for a corporation's influence in the creation of legislation such as uh, Monsanto and the Farm Bill? So there's nothing really in Scout that does that right now, what you're asking. Um, we have another product called Influence Explorer at influenceexplorer.com that studies the influence of people and corporations in, in the government, both in the legislative and regulatory processes. Uh, one way that, that corporate influence will soon uh, play into Scout and our other tools is that in Influence Explorer you'll see uh, if you dig around, that we have uh, information on comments that individuals and, and representatives of corporations make during the regulatory process. Those comments uh, will make their way into Scout at some point soon. Uh, we have another product that is in the pipeline coming out this summer that uh, will be solely dedicated to looking at the regulatory process through public comments, which will include tie-ins to influence of individuals and corporations. And I just opened the uh, Influence Explorer page for Monsanto. I, I want to uh, quick field uh, Vandana's question about upcoming hearing dates, uh, which is that that is, that is an upcoming uh, feature that we'll do soon. Right now, the upcoming information we have on bills is when party leadership announces that they'll be coming to the floor for voting or a debate of some sort. Uh, for hearings, the, the Senate uh, does a great job of of collecting its hearings in one place and updating them in real time. Uh, the House does a bit, of, a bit less of a good job, but the House actually has made a bunch of strides over the last eight months to a year in centralizing that information and keeping it up to date in more than weekly time. So we should be able to offer, I mean, certainly as soon as hearings are posted, we should be able to say when, we'll get that into SCOW and when that hearing will be. Uh, Paul has a question on whether we have IRS data on 529 groups and other independent campaign expenditure groups. And uh, Scout really is uh, a legislative uh, and government tool right now. Um, we don't have that information, um, although we do. Uh, our, uh, if you go to the Follow the Unlimited Money, which is the site that I was sharing earlier uh, in terms of um, highlighting the FCC tracker, um, I will go back to it. We have uh, more data here on outside groups. I know Chris had a question earlier about uh, U.S. code citations. Oh yes. Uh, so, right, one of the the chief, well, the, actually, the founding impetus inside Sunlight for creating Scout was that we wanted to track mentions of the U.S. code, specific mentions of the U.S. code. In our cases, they affected the Freedom of Information Act exemptions, uh, and so we, we've been following uh, various pieces of the U.S. code. We do that right now by following it in the, in the exact textual way that they appear. So we have alerts on the, the words section 552 of Title V, for instance. And then we have another alert on 
5 U.S.C. 552, because those are two different ways that uh, U.S. code citations appear. Uh, we are, one of the upcoming features actually that, that uh, I, Amy did not mention earlier, but that we are working on is making it so it can actually be much smarter about that, so that you do not have to know the exact, cita the exact formats of the, the way that U.S. code citations can appear in bills and regulations, so that you can just type in 5 U.S.C. 552 or however you want to you want to cite it, and then we'll bring back results that match that U.S. code citation, even if the exact text didn't match. So that's a particular power user feature that we're working on, but it's not there right now. Um, and there was a question about all of our different uh, projects and tools. Um, you can find that at sunlightfoundation.com slash projects. And you can see we mentioned Influence Explorer earlier on. Um, in addition to party time, and Scout is here, and a number of our other tools such as Follow the Unlimited Money, um, as well as some of our mobile tools. Thank you again for joining uh, us at Sunlight Foundation. If you want to follow us on Twitter, we're at Sun Foundation, and you can also go to our uh, Facebook page. Thank you.